Hello and thank you so much for joining me for Tuesdays with Tuesday. This is Dr. Tuesday Tate, your vision coach and life advisor. I recently had a discussion with a young couple regarding domestic violence and what does that look like. It was prompted from a show that I did on my radio show about a month or so ago, uh, Tuesdays with Tuesday. It airs on radionext.tv. Uh, internet radio every Tuesday from 2 to 4 p.m. Certainly invite you to join us. The first hour of that show is always about redemption, just uh, living as a Christian, and then sometimes just dealing with the issues that a lot of times we don't get to address in the church, such as domestic violence, sexuality, um, being single and called to ministry, and different things like that. And then the second hour is always about relationships. Sometimes I may do some things on resources as a vision coach, but also just wanting to make sure that um, we make listeners and those who have chosen to connect with me um, aware and we provide wisdom according to uh, the word of God on how to just live out this life and particularly live out this life as a Christian. So this young couple uh, talk to me about domestic violence and what it is. And one of the things that the Howards who were on my show, Pastor uh, Howard and his wife, Akisha, uh, they have a, a domestic violence ministry and they talked about long before the hand is raised, there are other forms of domestic violence, which we would call abuse, such as verbal, cursing, screaming, hollering, yelling, raging, Emotional abuse where someone is just has someone's emotions all over the place because of what they're doing or how they're treating them or how they're talking to them. One minute they love you, uh, the next minute or the next day they hate you. Today they're for you, tomorrow they don't want anything to do with you. Uh, they're in it one minute and the next minute they're saying, I never wanted you. And so this emotional roller coaster, psychologically, just what is that doing to your psyche, a psychological abuse, and how you start to feel about yourself. And then there's mental abuse. Again, just playing with your head, with, with the emotional things and the verbal things. And then, of course, we know there is physical abuse. There's also financial abuse, and there's also spiritual abuse. Using your relationship or their relationship with God or whatever their religion is or whatever their scriptural foundation is against you to get you to do things that they want you to do that you may not be in agreement with doing. And so there are different types of abuse that manifest in abusive domestic violence relationships long before you get into uh, the physical part of it. Um, I remember sharing with someone that uh, it wasn't so much that someone uh, raised their hand, but it was knowing that they could or that they would if the opportunity presented itself simply because of how they spoke to me uh, prior to uh, an incident that looked as if it could elevate and escalate to domestic violence or physically abusive relationship. So I want to encourage you, if you have an anger issue because rage uh, is the root of rage is anger. The root of rage is anger. And long before someone starts raging, they're angry. And long before they start talking to you crazy, they're angry, right? And so one of the things that Pastor Howard said is that a lot of times men may believe that when they're raising their voice and they're cursing at their children, or in this particular case, their woman, they're not being abusive. They're just communicating, and their communication may be forceful. Now, I understand forceful communication, speaking in authority, declaring it, listen, I need you to hear. That's one thing. But it's another thing when your communication always or often elevates to screaming and hollering and cursing. And I know someone would say, well, I'm not calling you out of your name. I'm not calling you a B. I'm not calling you a double H-O-R-E. Um, but if you say something as simple as go sit your A-S-S -S down or shut the H-E-double-L -L up or that is the stupidest S-H-I-T I've ever heard, then I'm saying to you, 
as Pastor Howard said on the air, that is verbal abuse and that is domestic violence. If you love someone, you should not have to communicate with them like that. Because the truth is there are too many other ways you could express your frustration or your challenges with them without using curse words. So to say, well, I'm not cursing you out, but if your words are violent and they're hurtful and they're directed towards that person, you are cursing them. Cursing them out? Maybe, maybe not. But if you are using curse words to communicate your frustration, your anger, your annoyance to that person, you are cursing them. And the Bible is clear for those of you who are Christians. Out of the same mouth should not come both cursing and praising. He also tells husbands, be careful how you speak to your wives, lest your prayers be hindered. He talks about avoiding coarse joking and foolish talk. And so we know that words, painful, hurtful words can last so much longer than actions. And that's why you have to guard your ear gates. You have to guard the things that come in because what comes in through your ears plants itself in your mind. And that's where you will replay. There's something some kid said to you on a playground when you were a child. There's something an adult said or a parent said. And periodically, it'll just swing past through your mind. And you're like, whoa, where did that come from? Because words last. Words are seeds and they become planted. And so I just want to encourage us to be mindful of our words. Words are very powerful uh, and very important to me. And so how you speak to someone, and I'm not talking about if you have to, uh, you're expressing this is how I feel about how you treated me, how you talked to me. And, and as long as that communication is in love and you're being mindful and as much as you can, your, your heart is to be respectful towards that person, but you're communicating what they said or what they did and how it affected you. That's one thing. It's another thing also if you're uh, speaking the truth in love uh, to someone about their behavior or their attitude or how they speak. And so if it's to better that person, if it's to better the relationship, and sometimes you have to say a harsh word, and I'm not talking about a mean, nasty, stank word, okay? I'm talking about a harsh word. And you have to speak the truth in love. The Bible says to build one another up. And so I want to encourage us. In our words, as we move towards 2015, having healthy, whole, good love relationships, that we're mindful of our words. And if your words has offended someone, I encourage you, go and make it right. Go and make it right. Use those same words to build and to cover and to reconcile and to bring healing and wholeness and love. It's called forgiveness. Use those words to forgive and to ask for forgiveness. God bless you. Use your words wisely.